Welcome to State of Reform's Virtual Leadership Series with some of healthcare's most thoughtful leaders. And now, the host of State of Reform, DJ Wilson. Hello, and welcome to another edition of our leadership series here at State of Reform. I appreciate very much you all making time to be with us here as we get to jump into the details of this recently announced merger between Virginia Mason and CHI Franciscan, part of the Common Spirit uh, uh, network of hospitals and providers. My name is DJ Wilson, one of the hosts here at State of Reform, and I appreciate the about 200 of you who have registered to join us today. This is live as we record it here, and as you are participating, you'll be able to ask questions uh, of our panelists by using the chat function here on the right of your screen. You'll notice under the Q&A section that you'll be able to, of course, write in whatever questions you have and, and then um, upvote those so that when you see somebody else who's asked a question that you're also interested in, you can hit the upvote question and our upvote uh, uh, function and prioritize the comments and the questions so that I can make sure that we integrate those into our conversation. We have about a half hour today, and so I wanna jump right in with our two guests, both, uh, both very well esteemed in their own right. As first of all, uh, Dr. Gary Kaplan, Chairman and CEO of Virginia Mason, and Katul Patel, the CEO of CHI Franciscan. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for making time. I appreciate it. DJ, good to be with you today. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Gary, let me jump in with you first. Um, uh, how did we get to this point? What, what is it, uh, how did we, uh, how did VM and CHI navigate the sort of tricky conversations that often happen in mergers like this one and arrive at a point where you could go public with your intentions? Well, I think, you know, I think uh, it really goes back quite several years, uh, obviously speaking from the Virginia Mason perspective, as you well know, DJ, and, uh, and you've written about this in the past as well, uh, we um, were in many ways a poster child for independence. Uh, despite some of the best advice of others and what was happening around us, uh, we were uh, determined to remain independent if that were possible. And as part of that, uh, our strategy was a series of partnerships and um, Katul Patel came to town, and uh, uh, as the new CEO of CHI, uh, we had a little bit of back and forth uh, uh, and decided to get our teams together uh, for like an initial uh, get together and see what might be possible as a partner uh, with partnering between us. And I'll never forget that, that meeting where Katul, who, you know, I had met a couple times previously, but didn't know very well, actually said, our intention at CHI Franciscan is to be in the top 75th percentile for quality and safety. And we're not there today, but within the next three to five years, we are going to be there. And our team, and I personally took note of that because as you know, our, our driving uh, vision at Virginia Mason is all around quality and safety and patient experience. And as we got to know each other over the ensuing several years, uh, announced our a partnership in 2017, uh, did some amazing things together, such as our cancer partnership with radiation oncology, uh, working together in uh, common facilities in Bainbridge, and just this morning, launching our new joint venture uh, birthing center on the Virginia Mason campus, which is really a joint venture. We came to see a like-minded partner uh, like-minded in our focus on quality and safety and patient experience, uh, but also um, a partner that really valued collaboration. And as we at Virginia Mason and our board and our senior leadership took a hard look at what was happening around us, the world sure has changed from five years ago when uh, we were, you know, again, uh, you know, dead set on being independent but when you look at the changes in our market, we saw major consolidated competitors uh, investing, investing you know billion or more dollars into this market uh, today and in the future. And we said, you know, Virginia Mason, uh, our patients most importantly, but also our physicians, our nurses, our team members, our leaders, 
uh, deserve better than an organization hanging on by the skin of our teeth. And so as we've engaged in how do we be better together and how do we look at bringing the best of both organizations, uh, we actually have said, uh, and this has been important to us at Virginia Mason because one of the reasons we've had so focused on staying independent was a belief that consolidation, at least historically, had led to increasing total costs of care we came together with a partner that wanted with us to explore what we've long believed, and that is the path to higher quality, safer, better patient experience. Care is also the same path to lower cost. And so here's a, a coming together of two significant organizations in this market that can, I think, improve the quality of care available to the people in our region, provide more access points, ways to enter our combined system, and in so doing, bend that cost curve, reduce the total cost of care, and um, it became compelling for us. And obviously, we just announced a non-binding MOU to explore uh, this coming together, but I think you'll hear from Katula as well. I think we're both optimistic that we can bring this to fruition by year end and really make a difference in the community for the people we're serving, and that's what it's all about. So. Um, that's kind of how we began. We thought about it and continue to think about it. Good, Did you good let me stuff. just add a couple of things because I think that um, you know, Gary has always does a tremendous job of of walking us down the history of, of this relationship. But you know, it was uh, when you look at Franciscan, you know, we have over 130 year uh, history, if you will, in Tacoma, uh, and in the last 10 years we expanded into the Olympic Peninsula um, and the peninsula as a, as a whole uh, with Harrison, which is now called St. Michael. We also obviously brought in. Highline, which is now named San Ann Hospital in, in Burien, and our expansion can continue to rise. Uh, we've had a lot of partnerships on a variety of different things with companies like Kindred and uh, for, for rehab uh, and, and some other ventures that we've had. But we, we really wanted to look for a right, the right partner that had the kind of uh, you know, accolades, if you will, not only regionally, but nationally. And, and we, we couldn't have found somebody uh, better than, than Virginia Mason. Uh, it was never a point about, you know, just expanding for the sake of expanding. I think Gary touched on some of these uh, that were important to us. We wanted to make sure that the partner that we had, which is why we entered into the strategic affiliation in 2017, was going to share in the same type of focus in terms of values, in terms of quality, in terms of patient experience, in terms of safety. It was very important to us. And I think that the last uh, few years, you know, as Gary outlined, uh, really gave us an opportunity to get to learn each other, uh, get to learn the organizations, because outside of, uh, you know, one uh, radiation oncology relationship, we just didn't have a longstanding history, if you will, between the two organizations. And I think we've got to this place, uh, you know, as, as Gary said, because we've had a lot of great people um, leading the way for us internally, uh, establishing uh, priorities for us, uh, including our boards. And, and as we got to know each other more, we definitely realized that, you know, we're speaking the same language in a variety of different ways, but it was always centered around the patient. It was always centered around quality. It's always centered around patient experience. And, you know, we are both a learning organization and will continue to do so. And, and I think that's where, uh, uh, that's why we, we came together uh, to make the announcement we did a few weeks ago. Yeah. You know, a great example of this, DJ, just so I could add sure. is what we found in the, in the CHI Franciscan leadership was curiosity. And I think we as leaders all know how important curiosity is to getting always striving to get better. So curious that Katul himself and his senior leadership team now for three years in a row um, came with us to Japan, have actually embraced our Virginia Mason production system as a way forward. And, you know, that, that kind of willingness uh, to learn. And we at Virginia Mason continue to um, learn from our Franciscan colleagues. I mean, that, that's the kind of mindset that I think can lead to a successful um, coming together. And uh, that's the spirit in which uh, we've both gone forward into this uh, to get us to this point. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I wanna ask you, Katul, about that Toyota production system, but also about the culture in general focused on quality. You both have highlighted the importance of quality, but how do you see integrating and adopting and then scaling that VM 
uh, culture focused on quality, not just Toyota, but really throughout the entire organization. Uh, how do you scale that throughout the CHI Franciscan organization, which already, of course, has its own its own culture? So what I what I said to Gary early on, uh, DJ, was that you know if we didn't start doing it on our own, it would be very difficult for us to embrace what Virginia Brace, Virginia Mason brought to us. And we so we started that journey uh, in 2015 when I arrived. Um, as I mentioned, we started focusing a lot more on quality, safety, and patient experience, and certainly the total cost of care. Uh, you know, we've had some significant uh, uptick, if you will, in terms of our quality and safety scores. You know, Gary and I have talked about this quite a bit. Uh, you know, our LeapFrog scores when I got here, as an example, were uh, mostly Cs. Um, we had a couple Bs and we had a D and we had an F. Uh, you know, irrespective of, of whether uh, anybody believes or doesn't believe in LeapFrog, the reality is an F is an F. And, uh, and it was, to me, a good marker for us to say, hey, we're not going to be an F organization. Um, and as you watch Franciscan focus, as we dedicated resources, we actually had to change leadership to make sure that we're focusing on all those areas. Um, you know, we stand here now as the, as the only system in the state with a number of A's. Uh, we have all A's and actually two B's that are very close to A's and we'll hopefully see that change in the next, next cycle. But, you know, we had to start with us irrespective of what Virginia Mason brings to us. Uh, the other part of this is, as we, as Gary said, we started to learn a lot more about the production system. And rather than just say, we're going to bring the Virginia Mason production system into Franciscan, we decided to start a pilot uh, at, uh, at St. Anne Hospital, which was formed in the Highline, and, and say to our team there, let's take for the Virginia Mason production system uh, and bring it to our organization, see if it works, um, use it as a pilot before we scale. And the reality is that we've seen enough value there. We've seen some of the uh, you know, the focus that the production system brings to us that we really believe that we're going to be able to scale this all throughout Franciscan Health System here uh, in the entire Puget Sound. And I think that's the value of, of what Virginia Brace Mason brings to us. Great, great, uh, great thoughtfulness there. I want to ask you, Gary, a question from Michael Mulroy, <clears throat> excuse me, Michael Mulroy, who's one of our um, our uh, guests watching, he asks about uh, whether VM will continue to provide female reproductive services and death with dignity care. That's been a hot topic since the, the Swedish Providence merger and, and through other conversations in Washington state. How have you come to that question uh, at VM as you've approached this, this uh, merger? So that's a good question. And thank you, Mike, who is one of my former partners and uh, a longtime leader at Virginia Mason. Uh, so this is an important issue for us, uh, obviously, and, and uh, as an independent uh, hospital, non-faith based, uh, this is one of the things we've had to ask ourselves quite carefully, it's how do we approach these issues. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, CHI Franciscan has what they call their non-faith uh, based arm or their secular division, which some people might call it. Um, I'm not sure those are the right words to use. Um, but we would remain a non-Catholic institution. Uh, that's important to us. It's important to our board. It's important to our team members. Um, and what that means is that we will continue uh, to provide uh, mo most of the services that we are providing. It also means that we cannot cause our, our colleagues at CHI Franciscan facilities to be out of compliance with the ethical and religious directives. To be totally uh, honest, uh, I believe that we will not be doing uh, pregnancy terminations and we will not be uh, uh, doing uh, death with dignity uh, or physician assisted death as, as some call it, um, but and this is where I want to be really clear because the Seattle Times reporting, the ACLU uh, statements, um, I hope, and we don't know any of this for sure, and Katul can't give us any more certainty either. Um, this is something that we are exploring um, in terms of process, but it's our hope and anticipation that we will continue to provide the full range of uh, women's reproductive services, family planning services, a contraception uh, for, to our patients, that we will continue to provide the full range of LGBTQ services, including transgender services, as Virginia Mason has emerged as a leader in this area, 
and the full range of palliative services, uh, which includes palliative sedation and other end of life approaches uh, as well. That's my hope. That's our anticipation. Uh, we made the decision to come public uh, with this, uh, as you alluded to, prior to having every I dotted and T crossed around this and many, many other issues. And the reason that we made that decision was we wanted content experts. We wanted the people on the front lines of care uh, to be able to come together to understand the current state and to envision a future state that really brings the best of both organizations together. And so that's why we've made the decision uh, to come forward even before some of these uh, issues are, are cast in stone. And finally, I wanna say that uh, most importantly, the relationship between the patient and the physician is paramount. And that's something that uh, we believe strongly in and we anticipate that will continue to be the case uh, as we go forward into this relationship. So is it perfect? No, uh, in many respects, you know, and I, people who know me know my own personal values. Um, we believe that we have enough in common and that this, as, I, as we've looked at all of the potential partnerships, and believe me, we could go through a long list, including remaining independent, but including every possible partnership up to and including private equity capital partners. Uh, we believe this gives the best opportunity for Virginia Mason and for our new joint operating company to really thrive in the future. And so uh, we've had to make some decisions around that and we'll make more as we go forward. Yeah, good. Katul, let me ask you about how this new joint operating company fits in to the broader common spirit framework. Laura Hawkins uh, asks about whether the new organization will be at some point subsumed in the common spirit or whether it will have some sort of independence. Can you sort of talk us through the org chart there? Sure. So, um, you know, just for, for many of your, your, um, your audience um, you know, that don't know, Franciscan has been uh, part of the legacy CHI now, which is uh, Common Spirit, which is outside of Kaiser, the largest organization in the country um, in terms of being a nonprofit organization. Um, so, so two things on that, you know, Franciscan, given uh, how strong we were in terms of performance within uh, Common Spirit, uh, we weren't going to quote unquote break away anytime soon, right? And, you know, we're, we're a very prominent part of the organization. We're going to continue to be what we felt was very important, though, is that, you know, given uh, some of the comments that Gary made, uh, Virginia Mason has been extremely strong uh, in terms of reputation, independence uh, for the entire Puget Sound for, for, for 100 years. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we capture that as part of the structure that we created. Now, you know, as, as Gary mentioned earlier, you know, we, signed, we have signed a non-binding MOU, which means that we have a lot of work to do between uh, where we are now uh, to the time we get to closing, including, you know, a lot of the, the bodies of work around the strategic plan, the corporate structure, all that kind of stuff that goes goes into the discussion. But what we are putting forward together is a uh, is what we're calling a joint operating company, which means that uh, there will be a, a board that is in essence uh, created that is 50% uh, Franciscan, 50% uh, Virginia Mason, because we feel very strongly that we want to create a new health system that is really focused on this community. It's really focused on making sure that we're, that we're doing what's right for our patients in this community and will continue to grow and prosper because of that. And so the org chart in essence looks like a joint operating company that will still be part of uh, Common Spirit Health and always be part of Common Spirit Health. Uh, you know, for, for some of the things that Gary and I are working on, not only are we working on a strategic plan for what, what this looks, look like, looks like in the future, but also we're looking at to, to see what kind of management focus and, and uh, you know, how can we actually uh, take the scale that Common Spirit brings to an organization like this and, and, and truly leverage it in terms of expense management, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, group purchasing, all those type of things that comes with the benefit of being part of a national system. The one other comment I'll make, which is not really um, attuned to the GOC structure, but, you know, when, when, co when COVID hit us here in this community, um, you know, we were very lucky uh, as a Franciscan system because we were part of Common Spirit, where many organizations were, were struggling with, uh, with access to PPE and supplies and all those type of things. Um, you know, we were in a much better shape because of the fact that we were part of a national system. And we're hoping that the, uh, the, the structure that we're going to create is going to 
uh, take full advantage of what Common Spirit brings for the local community moving forward. Let me, let me just add to that, DJ. We, um, sure. um, we agree, I agree with Katul, that the uh, power um, in a good way of being part of a national system uh, can really help us deliver better care for our patients. And that's uh, what it's really all about. So things like the purchasing um, uh, opportunities at lowest price points in the market will allow us to lower the total cost of care. Uh, but also things like the home health company or the hospital at home company that Common Spirit has, they're very exciting uh, to many of us who you know think about how does it actually work on the sharp end of care. And we know that patients will increasingly be cared for in the home that previously were in our institutions and in our uh, hospital. So there are lots of opportunities. And then finally, uh, we think, and uh, we've enjoyed our, I've personally enjoyed the opportunities to meet with leadership of Common Spirit, uh, that we will have an opportunity in this region in many ways to show a path forward, to be a, an innovation hub, an incubator, uh, what some might call a center of excellence or even a flagship for this national system. And, um, you know, those are opportunities. We have to earn those opportunities. Uh, but just as Virginia Mason has become a destination center of excellence for large Fortune 100 companies from around the United States, we hope to see that um, uh, play out to an even greater extent uh, on behalf of, of all of the communities that Common Spirit Health serves across the country. So Gary, I would be, and, uh, if I could, one other, one other comment on that, if I could. Uh, you sure. know, I think what is so unique uh, about what we're talking about here is Franciscan, if you look at us right now, we're in essence south and west, uh, whereas uh, Virginia Mason is, is north uh, and, uh, and east. Uh, you know, we have very small markets that we overlap in, which I think is just absolutely wonderful for us to really focus on what this health system of the future is going to look about. I mean, we use this tag phrase called the health system of the future, but it really has a lot of the tenets that Gary's talking about. It gives us the opportunity to truly come together as an integrated system, knowing full well, uh, you know, the Virginia Mason started as a group practice and then happened to have a hospital, you know, as I say it, and we were built as an acute care enterprise. And then over you know, the last decade, we have brought in a lot of, of providers and physicians to be part of the organization. There's a lot that we're going to do together that is going to be that incubator for all of Common Spirit Health. In fact, uh, you know, that is one of uh, the tenets of what we're trying to create as we put together our strategic plan for the future is to actually show what the value of this health system of the future is going to be for, for Common Spirit. Yeah, good. I, we have just a few minutes left here, and I want to riff through a couple of things, a couple of questions here. But before I do, I want to just say thank you to your team at Gary. Uh, as you know, my uncle had COVID. He went into the hospital in, on March 20th uh, at Virginia Mason, spent uh, 42 days, uh, about 30, 32 days, I think, on a ventilator and 42 days in the hospital. And he continues to be in a long-term care facility trying to recover, and he would not still be here with us if your team at uh, the end had not been top of class in every meaningful way. So that's good. You're just giving him our best from our care teams. He he does say thank you. Um, so let me ask a question from Ben Smith for you, Gary. He uh, you, you spoke to VM's leadership on LGBTQ issues, and we do just have a few minutes. But he wanted to highlight that VM has been participating in the Healthcare Equality Index, promoting equitable and inclusive care for LGBTQ patients in 2018. In 2019, does VM expect to remain as a participant in that index moving forward? Absolutely. And we intend to maintain our 100% score on that index. Great. This is important to us. It's important to our community. It's very important to our team members. And it's very important to me and our leadership. Uh, so the short answer is yes. Great. And I'd like you both to just sort of comment on this question for about a minute each. Um, the, the other side of the coin on quality and low cost uh, uh, care is value-based contracts or shared savings contracts with health plans. You're gonna have a footprint ranging from Edmonds in the North down to, I think you've got a couple sites, uh, Catool in Oregon. How do you see your relationship with payers changing 
Are you moving more towards value-based care on your strategic roadmap as a result of this, or how will this change that? Go ahead, Katol. You want, or you want me to start? It doesn't matter. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> well, I think you know value is our sweet spot, and it's where I think we need to stay in terms of, uh, as I said earlier, demonstrating that the path to higher quality, lower cost care or higher value care can be the same. And we think that's by taking all the waste out and all the non-value added care. So we are hopeful that being a bigger system with a bigger delivery uh, network and access points. And by the way, we anticipate non, um, what we call NUCO today, um, organizations to be part of a delivery network uh, that we can offer to health plans um, the kind of unprecedented value that they're seeking. And more importantly, or as importantly, their plan sponsors, uh, the, the employers, and those who are actually uh, paying for the cost of care. So we look to those opportunities. We've already had some preliminary conversations uh, about opportunities to partner in constructive ways. Uh, we think our complementary geography uh, is very helpful. So. We want to we want to deliver what the market is asking for, and I think that's higher quality, safer care at a lower cost, and I think that's where we're headed. Katul, you want to make just a quick comment on this? Me, Joe, just make one 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 quick comment. I think that you know Gary's points are just right on on everything, um, as, as they usually are. But you know the key for us has been to always go back and say what does the consumer or the patient really want, right? And um, you know, we, we can't have any conversations around value-based care without understanding what they want. And that's exactly what we're doing uh, as we're going through our planning phase. Um, you know, so many of the tenants that Virginia Mason brings, if you will, to this, to this organization is something that Franciscan has been working on in, ter in terms of quality. We couldn't get to value-based contracts without quality. And that's, that's what we've been focusing on for a number of years. Um, you know, Gary's point about having, uh, you know, some significant access points throughout the state are very important as we start getting involved more with value-based contracts. We wanna make sure uh, that as we build this system, that we have more access points that are closer to our consumers and our patients uh, than frankly anybody in the state. That's what we're looking to do. John Eddy asks about whether this partnership will encompass all lines of business. And I might add all assets of the two organizations. Is that the case? So as, as we stand here now, you know, we, we are, we're looking to actually, um, you know, continue to expand the, the services that we have. And I think that having two organizations of our size um, coming together will allow us to do that. Um, you know, we don't foresee any services outside of the ones that Gary's outlined a little bit, um, you know, changing um, in terms of, uh, you know, no, no longer offering as, as a new organization. We actually, like I said, we're going to look to expand our services and into new markets and new geographies as we And talk. some may be asking, you know, about research and education and our academic mission at Virginia Mason. That's very, very important to us. And I believe it's very important to our Franciscan partners. And yeah. so the Benaroy Research Institute, our longstanding, some of the oldest in the region, graduate medical education programs, Bailey Boucher House, which is a very special place, uh, built 27 years ago to care for people living and unfortunately at that time dying with HIV AIDS. Uh, these will all, are all we anticipate part of the coming together. Last question, just uh, because I'm curious, Katul, you mentioned the uh, uh, Harrison and Highline uh, as uh, new entrants in the last decade or so to the CHI family, now known uh, by Catholic names like St. Anne. Will the Virginia Mason brand be around in five years or Will that uh, undergo a, a name change as well? Well, we feel, and I know Gary will have a much more direct answer than I will, but I, I will tell you that we feel very strongly that one of the reasons that we've come into this partnership is that the Virginia Mason brand is not only uh, locally known and stately, statewide known, but it's nationally known. And the Virginia Mason name will, will survive for many, many years because frankly, that's going to uh, elevate us um, collectively as a group. Gary, I'm sure you've got some thoughts too. Yeah, I mean, we anticipate that our traditional brands and the legacy of both organizations will be in the name of our new uh, 12 hospital system. Uh, and we envision that the Virginia Mason facilities will continue to be Virginia Mason for decades into the future. 
Dr. Gary Kaplan, Chairman and CEO of Virginia Mason and Katul Patel, the uh, CEO of CHI Franciscan. Appreciate both of you guys uh, being with us and taking these questions. It's uh, very meaningful to have your engagement with us here at State Reform. And for those of you who are watching and participating here, uh, we're going to send you an email. I'd love to get your, your direct feedback on how we did. We'll send you a, a survey. And so your uh, input will continue to allow us to grow and refine this model. Really appreciate your participation. And of course, if you have additional ideas for content, we'd love to, love to get those from you. So thanks again for watching. and uh, Keep on doing good work, everybody. Thanks for joining us in this virtual conversation and for your support of our work at State of Reform.